For a long time, we did not return to the old headings and did not remember those times when, first of all, we were interested in the salaries of hard workers and what people of the past could buy with their money. Get ready, friends. Let's remember the past and compare the salaries of several people from different historical eras. Let's start with our first guest, Ryan Gosling, who was a simple laborer in the USA in 1854. This master builder worked on the famous old Blinsky Bridge, the second longest wooden bridge in the world at 64 meters long. Of course, the then hard workers were versatile and did not need a large staff of managers and modern technologies. At that time, the daily wage of an ordinary handyman was $1, which, according to current calculations, is equivalent to about $35.07. This means that Ryan Gosling was making about $9,000 a month. However, as always, there are nuances to consider when looking at inflation data. If you look at land prices in New York, you will notice that they have increased 110 times from 1850 to 2023. The price of land in 1850 was about $29, and in 2023 it has already reached $3,200 per American acre. This explains why it is sometimes difficult to accurately calculate the ideal inflation figure. Some experts suggest using a multiplier of 50 or so to convert old dollars into modern money. In recent years, this multiplier may have risen to 60 due to events affecting the economy. Our handyman Gosling received a fair estimate of his salary, about $1,500 in modern money for 1855, which equaled about 25 bucks a month, or, in other words, a dollar a day. With this money, he could purchase various goods and services. His daily salary allowed him to buy about a kilogram of meat, two kilograms of rice, one pair of pants, a kilogram of soap, three pairs of socks, a pair of t-shirts, or four pairs of good woolen mittens. Of course, this is not all at the same time, but examples of what could be bought. If we move on to more global points, then the cost of immense rent in the small town of Oswego was $16. And if you want to have your own home, Ryan Gosling could buy a simple one-story house with 50 square meters and 40 acres of land for about $250. Provided that he would independently build a house from scratch, it would be much cheaper. It is interesting to note that the magazine published instructions for building a luxurious two-story cottage, costing about $2,000. This amount corresponded to the salary of the chief engineer of the bridge, Nicholas Powers, so Gosling could have built an entire mansion for his yearly salary if he had a blueprint for the car which he didn't have at the time. In terms of weapons, a revolver from that era cost about $20 and a used rifle $8. For his monthly salary, Gosling could buy the typical price of a revolver, or even two rifles. Thus, it can be said that Gosling's salary provided him with the opportunity to meet basic needs and even something beyond that, if he planned his expenses well. It is interesting to note that if we multiply the price of the coffee grinder by 60, we get $18, give or take. Now similar devices also cost about the same. We will look at other interesting facts related to history and look into ancient Rome. Now let's look at the average employee of a winery in ancient Rome, based on the numbers from the book container volume. In the first century of our era, our gosling earned one denarius, which was four Roman sisters, each of which was equal to four asses, the lowest and most popular coin of that time. According to graffiti on the walls of the city of Pompeii, one denarius could buy about 1.5 kilograms of bacon, 1.5 liters of olive oil, a pound of pork, 3 kilograms of bread or 5 liters of wine. In Rome, wine was drunk almost instead of water, and it was heavily diluted. The book also cites a text from the tombstone of Caledius Eroticus, which describes his visit to the tavern. For one ass he drank half a liter of wine and a serving of bread. As a result, for 13 hours of work, our Guslingus daily salary was 16 bucks, which in theory allowed him to afford such entertainment from time to time. So our Ryan Gosling in ancient Rome could eat, drink, and spend time with a woman, if he wanted, for his daily wage. I cannot fail to mention that a modern machine costs about a hundred denarii, and it quite falls under the analog of modern technology. Even for Ryan Gosling, 
or Goslingus did not spend money on food and work non-stop, he would have to save his salary for three months in order to buy a new tunic, which would cost from 3 to 15 denarii, and boots about 2 denarii. Housing rent cost 25 denarii per month. Compared to Ryan Gosling's situation in the United States, his colleague Guslingus from ancient Rome faced even more difficult conditions, since the rent took away all his salary. As a result of this precarious situation, there was an unbridled growth in ancient Rome of quarters insulas, consisting of huge five, six-story buildings with cold rooms, furnished without furniture, where simple hard workers lived, renting housing for almost 10 Roman asses. However, the issue of own housing in ancient Rome was muddy and complex. Most hard workers simply did not have the opportunity to save up for their own housing, as time was not on their side. The easier option was to just join the army and get land for free. Otherwise, it was physically impossible to accumulate enough funds for housing for a hard worker. Let us now dive into ancient China and consider the wage and price system of the past. As our guest, we have Rai Gosteling, who works as a builder in Beijing in 1750. He earns about one Mao a day. Mao is the currency of China and many pots of Southeast Asia at that time. The tile, also known as liang, was used as both a measure of weight and money. As a basis, one liang of the weight of a silver ingot was taken, which was divided into 10 mao, and mao, in turn, was divided into 10 fen. Thus, our guest Rai Gosteling earned one Chinese monetary unit mao per day, which was a tenth of a silver bar. A particular note is that in ancient China there were about 170 different types of coins, but in this case we will not rely on a study conducted by historians in 2011. Instead, we use the Lamb standard of 37 grams of silver, which is equivalent to Ryanus Guslingus, or gasoline, receiving about 3.7 grams of silver a day in Beijing. For this amount, one could buy a liter of butter, a liter of beer, 2 kilograms of soap, one and a half kilograms of meat, two kilograms of bread, 52 eggs or half a square meter of fabric. Interestingly, the researchers originally wanted to compare wage to cost ratios in Europe and China of that era. They were looking for an answer to the question of who lived richer and to break the stereotype about the poverty of China at that time. The results were unusual. The difference between the cost of food baskets for Europeans and Chinese in 1750 was minimal only about 10%. For a full life with the consumption of 26 kilograms of meat, 108 kilograms of bread, 3 kilograms of soap and other ingredients, a European needed about 5,008 grams of silver, while in China it was about half a kilo. After all, our Ryanus Guslingus earned about the same as the hard workers in Milan and Leipzig. London and Amsterdam were slightly ahead, but otherwise hard workers in Europe and China had similar wages and consumer goods prices. Unfortunately, there are few clear numbers and calculations available for China, as information about ancient times is limited. However, some hard workers were found to be paid in beer for their labor, which was unusual but not surprising, as other workers were also paid with beer at various times in history, including the builders of the Egyptian pyramids and workers in the Middle Ages, However, exact analogies and the determination of exact prices are not always possible, since there is not enough data available from the past. But what we can say, we have already said in our video, 